Hello, this is Ms. DB, and today we're going to learn about series and summation notation. This is also called sigma notation, S-I-G-M-A. And our objective is to evaluate the sum of a series expressed in sigma notation, or summation notation. So in the last lesson, we learned how to find the nth term of a sequence. And a lot of times we also want to find the sum of a certain number of the terms of a sequence. So if we have a starting and ending point of our sequence, we can add them up. A series is the indicated sum of the terms of the sequence. So if we have the sequence 1, 2, 3, 4, the series is when we add them together. So there will be plus signs instead of commas for series. If in the sequence 2, 4, 6, 8, dot, 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 you would still use plus signs, but after the 8, you would add the dot, dot, dot. So this is a finite series here, and this is an infinite series. And we'll work more with infinite series later. And then we have um, some fractions being added together. Remember that to add fractions, you have to have a common denominator. So that might be a little bit tricky <laughs> to remember how to do those. If you have a calculator with the fraction key, you can go back to that as well. Do not change these to decimals. That would just be painful. One way to get a common denominator is to look at the bigger numbers. Okay, 6. 6 has the factors 2 and 3, so they're already included in the 6. So it looks like I will probably have to multiply for sure the 6 times 5 together. And then 4 has a factor that's 2 and 2. There's already a 2 in the 6, so I'm just going to need one more 2. Let's check. Does 4 go into 60? I know 5 goes into 60 because it ends in a 0. I know 6 goes into 60, 6 times 10. So if 4 goes into 60, then I would use, yep, it does, 15. So I would use 60 as my denominator in each of these, and then I would have to change each of these to 6 60ths. All right, so because many sequences are infinite and do not have defined sums, we often find partial sums. A partial sum will be denoted by S sub n. It's the sum of a specified number of terms of a sequence. So we're going to be looking for partial sums or for sums of finite sequences in this lesson. We're not going to do infinite sums right now. So this is just an example of a, of, of a series. We have S sub 1 is 2 if we're looking at n being the even numbers. We're, so we're just adding the even numbers together. And s sub 2 would be 2 plus 4 is 6. And s sub 3, that's 3 terms, would be 2 plus 4 plus 6 is 12. And s sub 4, we would add um, the 8 to that. Now, of course, you can't find the sum of all the even numbers because they're going to keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger. But you can find the partial sum if you want to say of how many terms you want to find that sum of. So we can also use summation notation or sigma notation to do that. Now, it's going to use this kind of crazy sigma sign. It's a capital letter, um, sigma, a Greek letter. You can find this letter if you're using the most recent, recent version of Word. You can use the equations tool to find this. And that's what the worksheet is set up with this already there. And then you just have to plug in the different parts. And if you're handwriting, it's kind of like an E or a 3, I guess. It's more like a 3, backwards 3, and it's pointy. It's not, um, it's not curved at all. Or it's like an M turned on its side, kind of like that too. You don't have to put these little extra, you know, hitches on the end of it, just like this is fine. At the bottom of the sigma will be where we're going to start our term. A lot of times that's 1. And at the top, we'll go, how many terms out do we want to go? So here's an example of a series that is written in sigma notation. So at the bottom, they'll tell you, we use k. We don't use n, we use k. So we starting with k equals 1. That's the first term. And we're going to go up to 5. And we want, this one is going to have the formula 2 times k. That will change depending on the different series that you have. 
So here's an example, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. Now often the hardest part is writing the formula. And we can use the arithmetic and the geometric explicit formulas that we used in 12.1, um, or you can just try to figure out what is the pattern, what is the rule. So in this one, they, they noted that a of k equals 4 times k. See, this is the first term. This is the second term. This is the third term. This is the fourth term. This is the fifth term. So they said, well, look at that. Every time I can just take the term number and multiply by 4, and I'll get that. I'll get the next value of this series times, not plus. So that means that the rule is 4 times k. This is also arithmetic, so you could have used the the formulas for arithmetic, and it would be a little bit more complicated, but it would still work. So then the next thing to do is to use your sigma notation. We're going to start at 1, so when k equals 1. So you have to put that at the bottom, k equals 1. And at the top you put how many terms out we went. We went to 5 terms, so the 5 goes here. So if you start at k equals 1, then this number will equal how many terms you have. And then you put your formula, your explicit formula, right here. And that's writing this, 4 plus 8 plus 12 plus 16 plus 20, that's writing this in summation notation. Okay, here's another example. I'm going to put this over 1 because you can always write an integer over 1 and it means the same thing. So let's see if we can figure out a pattern. It doesn't look arithmetic. It doesn't look geometric. This is the first term, this is the second term, and so on. So if I ignore the plus and minuses, which mess me up a little bit, this 6 squared is 36, 5 squared is 25, 4 squared is 16. So a lot of times it helps you to write the term number above the entry in your series. So now I have to deal with the plus and minus part. In order to do that, use this, negative 1 to the k. So for the first term, when k is 1, I would get negative 1, and that is what I started with. For the second term, when I square negative 1, I get a positive number, so I'm back to a plus. Then I go to k equals 3, I would get a negative 1 to the third power is a negative 1, so there's my negative sign again, my minus sign. So using this, anytime you see a back and forth, negative, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, you can use this. However, sometimes you might have to add 1 to this or subtract 1 to this. If you're starting with a positive, then you want to make this be, if k was 1, you would want this to be a positive number. Okay, so um, other than that, it's just 1 over k squared. So for our sigma, we're going to start with k equals 1. And we're going to go up to 6 because we want to go to 6 terms, so that will match that. And then you put your rule in, and you're done. And here it is. If you're starting with um, a positive, you'll use this. If you're starting with a negative, use this. So jot that down on your paper. If you see alternating signs, plus, minus, plus, minus, or minus, plus, minus, plus, then you will use one of these two parts in front of your rule. It's not the whole rule. It's just the part that changes your sign from negative to positive for each term. Okay, this is just another example with a fraction, and we have 2 over 4 plus 2 over 9 plus 2. So you're trying to figure out the rule. It sure looks like 2 is always going to be on the top. Now this is the first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term, but it's like the 2 squared would be 4 and the 3 squared would be 9. So if I just add 1, to my term number and then square it, I would get 2 squared is 4. If I add 1 to this and then square it, so you really have to be kind of a detective and you have to figure out what am I doing to the term numbers to get to the rule. So I think this will work and you can always check it of course with trying a few values. But yep, they came up with the same rule except they have 1 on top. How can that be? That's not correct. So we'll just change that <laughs> and put the correct rule in. And um, this 
is not the correct rule. They're not alternating, so they just accidentally typed in the wrong rule here. Sorry about that. It should be 2 over k plus 1 squared. Okay, now this one alternates, and it starts with a negative. So if we have negative 1 to the k, that'll take care of that part. And then we just need to figure out what is the rule to get from here to here. Looks like all I have to do is multiply by 2. Multiply k by 2, and it'll take care of the 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. I also have to multiply that by negative 1 to the k so that I can alternate back and forth between negative, positive, negative, positive. Yep, they came up with the same rule I did. So now we just plug that in. Now they say the first six terms, which is a little bit one, two, three, four. They only wrote five up here, so I'm going to add one more. Now some of these numbers are not, like we could actually do this. We could do this math, and we could make sure that we get the same answer using this explicit formula and summation notation as we do if we just did the math. But you're practicing writing these in sigma notation. We're not practicing adding numbers. We're practicing writing them in this format. All right, so here's some problems from your worksheet. I did put the linear arith arithmetic and the exponential slash geometric explicit formulas on here that you can go back to if you can't figure out the pattern, if it is if it does fit one of these, if you're adding the same number each time, or if you're multiplying, or not multiplying, but um, if you have the, yeah, if you're multiplying by the same thing each time. So you could use that if needed. Um, let's see. We'll do a couple problems, and then um, I'll, I'll go to the worksheet to show you how to edit this so that you can put your, use that sigma notation. All right, so number... One, we have the series 2 plus 4 plus 8 plus 16 plus 32 plus 64. Now you can either write the term numbers by it, jot them down, and try to figure out how do I get from one to the other. But this one's a little bit trickier. Like I can't just multiply by 2. That doesn't work. I can't just um, square the term values. That doesn't work. So let's check and see if it's arithmetic or geometric. If it's arithmetic, I'm adding the same number to each consecutive term and that's not true because plus 2 plus 4 plus 8 is it geometric that would be if I'm multiplying the same amount each time times 2 times 2 times... yes so that means that my common ratio is 2 because every time I'm multiplying by 2 so that means that I could use this formula now it might not be the most simple formula but it will work we use k instead of n though when we do this so a sub 1 is still the first term. That's going to be 2. r is also 2. And I'm going to go to the k minus 1. So you use k instead of n. And then that rule would be then um, what I would use for the sigma notation right here. And for the top number, it says write the notation for the first six terms. So then we'll put a 6 here because that's how far we want to go. And we're starting with k equals 1. And then instead of this question mark, I'm going to put my rule of 2 times 2 to the k minus 1. Now, as I write that, you may, you may as, you, as you think about this, find a simpler rule. And here is a simpler rule that I just noticed. But I didn't notice it at first. And you don't have to write the most simple rule. This rule is it's going to work. When I put 6 in for k, I get 5. 2 to the 5th is 32, 32 times 2 is 64. So it works, my rule, but a simpler rule would have been if I just wrote 2 to the k power. So 2 to the 1 power is 2, 2 squared is 4, 2 to the 3rd power is 8, 2 to the 4th is 16, and so on. So this would have been a simpler rule, but that's okay. Either one would be fine. Okay, number 2, I have negative 6 minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2. So the first thing to do is to come up with the rule. So this is the first term, second term, third term, fourth term, fifth term. You can try to figure out what I do to the term number to get to that number. If you see something, like do I always subtract 7? Maybe that would work. Subtract 7, subtract. So I think that is the rule is I could go k minus 7. 
So if I start with the first term, 1 minus 7 is negative 6. Start with the second term, 2 minus 7 is negative. Yes, that's going to work. But let's say I didn't see that. I could say, well, I can see that this is an arithmetic series, so I could use this. It won't be the most simple form, though. So a1 is negative 6 plus n, that, I'm going to replace that with k, minus 1 times the common difference, which is every time I'm adding 1 here, right? Negative 3, yep, I'm adding 1. So that's just times 1. So let's see, that's negative 6 plus, I can simplify this, 1 times parentheses k minus 1 is still k minus 1. Hey, this simplifies to the same thing of k minus 7. So I would have got the same rule whether I figured it out logically and using my brains or whether I went to the explicit formula and plugged in the parts and then simplified. So the, the number that goes on top again is how many terms, and that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We'll just use the number of terms they have listed. And then the rule is just k minus 7. All right, let's move to the worksheet. I'm going to open that up so that you can see how you can edit what I have put in here. So this is a doc x, which means that we can use formulas. And I've already put the formulas in. And you can just edit these to replace the question marks with what they need to be. So this was supposed to be a 6. I'm trying to select just the question mark, and I'm not even sure I got Oh, I did get it. OK. And then this was going to be the rule. This rule that we decided the simplest rule would be 2 to the, now I don't have a power button here, but I can use this, and that would be to the k. Or I can, this is already an equation, I can go click up here to design, and I want to do the exponent part, so I could go 2, and then click on that little box, and edit it to k. And that's it. And then, so, so you're clicking on these little question marks. If you wanted to, like, let's say you accidentally deleted it and needed to write your own sigma, go to the insert and then to the equation. And it's right in here where it says large operator. And there's this one, but this one doesn't have the stuff above and below. This one has the things above and below it, summation. And then you can get your, put your k equals, usually it's 1, but not always. And you can put your ending part up here. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And then you'd put your rule, your explicit formula, right there. I haven't figured out the rule for number 3 yet. And when you go through your worksheet, you'll see I put those little sigmas there for each of them. This one I gave you a big hint that it's to the k power. Actually, maybe this is, yeah, that'll work. And you just go through it like that. Okay, going back to our lesson. The next part is actually easier. So we started with the hardest part of writing the rules, and now we're going to, now that we have the rule, we're going to expand the series and evaluate. Now this is where you might have to simplify fractions, and it might be a little bit trickier. So what we do is we write this, 3 to the k. First we put a 1, oh, not a 1. We start with k equals 2 in this one. You really have to check. Sometimes you start with 1 a lot of the times, but sometimes you don't. In this one, we start with k equals 2. So our first term is 1 over 3 squared. And then we replace k with our next value up to 3. 1 over 3 squared, and then 1 over 3 to the 4th, and then 1 over 3 to the 5th. We stop when we use that number up there. Then we simplify each part. That's 1 over 9 plus 1 over 27 plus 1 over 81 plus 1 over 243. Now, the common denominator of all of these is 343, because each of them went into 340, 243 so many times. And getting a common denominator means I have to multiply both top and bottom by what it took to get to 243. So 1 times 27 is 27. This one, 27 times um, 9, is equal to 243. So I took 1 times 9. This is 81 times 3. So 3 over 243, and then 1 over 243. And then when we add fractions, we just add all the numerators. 39 plus 1 is 40. And that's our 
are sum of this series. There's not that many that are fractions, especially on your worksheet, so you won't have to get too many common denominators. So in this one, we're starting with k equals 1, and we're going up to k equals 6. So we just write this all out. That's the expanded form, 1 squared minus 10 plus 2 squared minus 10, and so on until we get to 6 squared minus 10. And then we simplify each of these parentheses, and then we add them together. So 1 squared minus 10 would be 1 minus 10 is negative 9. 2 squared minus 10 would be 4 minus 10, or negative 6. 3 squared minus 10 would be 9 minus 10, is negative 1. 4 squared minus 10 would be 6. 5 squared minus 10 would be 15. And 6 squared minus 10 would be 26. So we add all of those together. And the answer is 31. So that is your answer to this problem. Here's an example with 2k minus 1, where k starts at 1 and goes up to 4. So again, we just write it out, expanded form, putting the 1 and then the 2 and then the 3 and then the 4 in for k. And then we simplify and we add and we get our answer. Okay, here's some problems on your worksheet. Number 8 is started for you and gives you the hint that 2 is where we start, k equals 2. So that's the first value we plugged in. And then we plugged in 3, 4, and 5. And then you simplify each of these parts, and then you add them together. Let's look at number 9. I already wrote out what the first four terms would be from k to 1 to 4. And now you need to add these together. So we have the denominators of 1, 2, 3, and 4. A common denominator, look at the bigger ones. 3 times 4 is 12. Would that work as a common denominator for the other parts as well? Yes. So I'm going to change each of these fractions to twelfths. And to do that, you need to multiply top and bottom by what it takes to get the bottom to be 12. So for 1 over 1, that's the same as 12 over 12. For 1 over 2, I need to multiply both top and bottom by 6. So 6 over 12 is the same as 1 half. And then this one needs to be multiplied by 4. And then the last one needs to be multiplied by 3. And then you add the numerators up. You leave the bottom as 12. So 12 plus 6 is 18. Plus 4 is 22. Plus 3 is 25. You can leave your answer in improper fraction form, no problem. And then you're done. All right, number 11. Let's look at this one. So what we're going to do is plug in starting with k equals 1 and going up to 3. So first we would go 2 times 1 plus 1. And then the next term we add is going to be 2 to the second power plus 1. And then finally we would have 2 to the third plus 1. And then you simplify each part. Whoops. And you just continue simplifying until you have your sum. I won't finish it. You can finish it, and you'll get your answer right there. All right, last part we're going to do is if you have, you know, a lot of a lot of terms, like 40 or 20 or 100, you don't want to have to write these all out and add them up. So there are some common series that we have developed formulas for. All right, the first one is called a constant series. If you have a summation with just a number here, then all you have to do is multiply that number by how many terms you have. From 1 to 5, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 terms. So you take one, 5 times 3 and get 15. So the formula for the sum of a constant series is just the number of terms you have times that constant number. So there's n terms, so we take n times c. There's also linear series. That's like 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5. It's also called a counting series. And when you have a linear series, the formula that they have developed, and this shows how they got that formula, is going to be n, the number of terms you have, times n plus 1, all divided by 2. Also, there's a quadratic, which is a little more complex to show the formula for that. 
but there is a formula for that as well. You take the number of terms you have, and then you multiply that by one more than that, and then you multiply that by 2n plus 1, and that whole thing divided by 6. So these you want to keep handy, and if you have either a constant, linear, or quadratic series, it'll have the form where this is just a constant, a number, not a variable. This will be just k, and then this will be k squared. Don't forget that when you are when you're finding n, how many terms you have, that this has 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This has 6 terms, not 5. Don't just take 10 minus 5. You have to count both the 5 and the 10 as your term numbers. All right, so is this a constant, a linear, or a quadratic? It's a constant because there's no variable. So once you know that, you can use that formula formula we have that says all you have to do is take 6 times the number of terms you have. Now there are 7 terms, not 6. There's 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. There's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 terms. So I take 6 times 7 and I get 42. The other method is to go ahead and write out 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 plus 6 until you get to 7 terms out and then you can add them together and get 42. Sometimes though that method would be take way too long. Okay, is this a, a constant series, a linear series, or a quadratic? And this one is linear when it's just k. So we can use the formula that says we take n times n plus 1 all over 2. And our number of terms is 9. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 1, 2. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, oh, it's 8, sorry, 8 terms. And so I use that for n, 8, n. This would be 8 here. 8 plus 1 is 9. So we have 8 times 9 and then divide that by 2. So 72 divided by 2 is 36. You could also write all of those out, 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 plus 6, and you would get the same answer. Okay, here we have a quadratic series, k squared. So the formula for this is n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. And we have 10 terms here. So we put 10, and then 10 plus 1 is 11, and then 2 times 10 is 20 plus 1. So we have 21 there. So we have 10 times 11 times 21, and then we have to divide all of that by 6, and we end up with 385. You can see this one's a little more work to write them out by hand, so they said, well, you could use a graphing calculator, and you could add them up um, you know, using your calculator, or you could use other technology, and they also got 385 for that. Okay, so on your worksheet, you're going to have to tell whether it's constant, linear, or quadratic, and then use the formulas in order to evaluate the series. So the formulas I put down here so we could look at them as needed. So in the first one, 13 k squared, that is quadratic. So you're going to use the formula n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. And we have 9 terms. So n is going to be 9. So 9 times 10 times 2 times 9 is 18 plus one more is 19, all over six. And then I would get a calculator out, and I would multiply and divide by six. And you should not, I don't think you'll get a decimal. Whoops, I multiplied instead of, or I added instead of multiplied for one of them. Nine times 10 times 19 is 1,710. And if I divide that by six, yeah, I get a, I get a whole number of 285. And then number 14 is a constant. So for the constant, the formula is just n, how many terms you have, times that constant number. So I have 12 terms, and it's times 6. And this is a constant. And there's some more on your worksheet, but they're not too difficult. So anyway, thanks a lot. If you have any questions, let me know.